do let's take a roll call who all is here rachel Pellier. okay rachel is here bob stevenson is here car is here Cara, Cara's here. Sorry. <laughs> Logan's here. Logan's here. <clears throat> Mike is here on my phone. He can hear. And I see we have Karen Montanez here now. I'm here too, and, Joe. And Joe is here. And Tim is here. And Tim, did you start recording? I did, yep, and you should have okay. gotten a little, little pop-up, I think. Great. Great. Did anybody look at the minutes of the last meeting? We need to approve them. I have motion to approve. Did I do that right? I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> nice. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I, that makes it unanimous. Minutes are approved. Uh, before we go too much further, the, the real uh, item that we have coming up is the leaf recycling on November 6th at A1 Organics down there off of Santa Fe. I think it's Kenyon. Uh, anyway, just south of 285 there. Uh, I don't know how many of you have done that before, but Will told me that A1 would like to have at least six people there, which I think is a lot. But if we had at least that many show up at, at, to start and get us going uh how many of you could make that that saturday do we know like i can go but i'm just curious i did it last year and the yeah. one thing i will say is they're long like it's it's pretty labor intensive so doing that for four hours or however five hours is a lot because you're literally just picking up bags like heavy yeah. some wet bags of leaves all day yeah yeah we 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 tried to rotate it some last year and maybe that's why they're concerned about having that, that many people there to split the duties but uh what's the date bob uh november 6th the week after yeah. halloween i could be there logan can be there mike can be there i can be there i think i should be there and Carl was there last year too. Let's give yeah, it was there last year. <laughs> it was a workout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully the weather's good. We're going a little later this year. We're usually one weekend in October, and then, but I think because of Halloween coming on the thirty-first, I don't know. But anyway, uh, if we can make that then we're in good shape we'll have enough people to satisfy them and maybe we can uh give people a break or you know i'm going to see if we can line up a couple more volunteers so that we can at least get a break and and go somewhere warm up whatever it takes so that you're not worn out by the end of the day I don't mind it that much. I'm kind of used to it, but it can be. Yeah, well, if they want six people there, at least to start, then that's what I'm thinking. Maybe we could could uh, uh, send people home or, you know, see what happens, but at least give people breaks if they're worn out. I know last year, by the time I got to check checking people through or whatever, it was uh, it was a good thing because I needed that break. 
So yeah, if we get if we get everybody there, then I think we'll be in good shape. Okay, that's that's all I really needed to know. Tim and Karen, do you want to take over the show? Sure, and I can um, I guess quickly introduce Karen. And I know Karen has a really uh, developed PowerPoint that she's going to go through. Um, does that work for you, Karen? If I give a really quick introduction. That works for me. Great. So Karen is our chief um, building official. Um, Karen works in our um, community development department. And actually, just really quickly before I jump into introducing Karen, um, I just wanted to give all of you a quick update on where we stand um, with the updates that you requested from our subject matter experts. So we had hoped for this first meeting, of course, at your request to be about uh, recycling and waste. Unfortunately, there was a conflict with the person who will be doing that presentation. Um, so this month we'll be doing a green building uh, with Karen. Uh, next month we'll be doing waste and recycling um, with our public works director, Maria D'Andrea. And then in December, we'll have uh, one of our deputy directors of utilities, Steve Simon, in to talk about water conservation and education. Nice. So that's certainly where we stand uh, now based on the feedback that you provided. Um, so Karen um, has been with the city um, a year, right, Karen? Okay. <laughs> uh, she has really had a long and, and dedicated career to Englewood, and we're really appreciative of all that she's done for the city. Um, so one of the things that Karen and her assistant chief building official, Carrie, and some others on their staff have been working on um, the last year or so is basically developing and understanding and doing research on uh, green building codes um, and how those could potentially be applied in Inglewood. And she did a presentation to council, um, I think several months ago now. Um, and so she's here tonight to give you um, a presentation and update on the work that they've been doing. So I'll fade into the background and uh, turn it over to Karen. Okay, thanks, Tim. Um, the PowerPoint I have right now, it's really just a condensed version of what I presented to council a few months ago, uh, but just, to give you kind of an idea of what the, the green building code is, or it's actually not called the green building code, it's the green construction um, code. So I'm just going to start that and get this open. Okay, everybody can see it. Looks good. Okay. So the green construction code, it focuses on six primary areas for commercial construction. The green construction code doesn't uh, address residential construction other than multifamily. So it focuses on site sustainability, water use efficiency, energy efficiency, the indoor environment, uh, materials and resources construction and plans for operation. Um, the majority of the uh, energy efficiency is actually covered in the already currently adopted International uh, Energy Conservation Code. Um, as far as site sustainability, it focuses a lot on um, the existing building envelope for those uh, buildings that are already in existence and then where it's going on the site. Um, this particular code requires an inventory and assessment of, of the site as it is. Um, Inglewood doesn't have a lot of the things that it, it looks at as far as like wetlands, fish and wildlife habitat, etc. Um, since we're kind of landlocked, um, you know, a lot of the areas have already uh, have development on them. Um, as part of that site sustainability, it requires the removal of any kind of invasive plants and encourages the use of native or adaptive plants. And it also addresses stormwater, um, encourages vegetated roofs, pervious pavements, uh, rain gardens, things of that nature. It also uh, looks at reducing the heat island effect. Um, you know, you've been in a, a hot uh, parking lot, you know how how uh, much heat is generated off of that. So the uh, green construction code requires shading of those areas 
either by vegetation, buildings or structures, or uh, requiring permeable pavement and pavers. It also requires that walls that face um, east and west be shaded, um, and that that shading is full in within 10 years of construction. That shading can be vegetation, um, man-made structures, other buildings, uh, et cetera. It also looks at reducing light pollution uh, by creating lighting zone districts. Also encourages pedestrian walkways, bicycle paths, bicycle parking, and uh, vehicle provisions for uh, EV ready or EV uh, vehicles. Um, it looks at water use efficiency, um, basically going back to the veg or the landscaping, um, looking for biodiverse planting of native plants, and also uh, trying to reduce the use of water um, by either, you know, doing zero scaping or um, also looking at using um, pot or, or not using potable water. And it also has a lot of um, uh, requirements for irrigation. So, you know, you, as time has gone by, you know, now we have, you don't have to worry about running outside anymore, you know, to, to see if it's raining or whatever to turn off your sprinkler system. They now have gauges that can do that for you. And so the, the green construction code requires that you use that uh, new technology. Also talks about water bottle filling stations within uh, buildings, um, trying to lessen the use of uh, plastic bottles and uh, you know plastic cups that just get tossed to the side. And then during construction, it also looks at what happens with that waste. Um, it wants 50% of that to be diverted from the landfills. And there's a whole process of, of keeping record of that and uh, submitting that to the jurisdictions. And then after construction, it also addresses um, having, you know, areas to have items recycled like uh, batteries, glass, uh, paper, et cetera. And then residential spaces, the multifamily, it also has areas that you can take materials that could be uh, used by others. But you kind of get into an area where you don't want it to become a dumping ground. So it's it's kind of a fine line there. <clears throat> also, there's constructions uh, and plans of operation that uh, even after construction, um, a building owner is supposed to keep record of how uh, they've done things and then how the um, agencies have all worked together and submit that uh, to the city. So as you can see with a lot of these uh, requirements, they're not so much with the construction of the building itself, which the building code takes care of and the inner um, the energy code takes care of a lot of it goes into other areas such as um, you know the the zoning codes as far as parking um, also you know uh, water usage all those things that go into other uh, departments so right now what we're doing is we're working with um, with the uh, planning side of community development and getting an outline of items for review by the uh, Uniform Development Code Steering Committee um, as part of their Code Next project. And like I said, these items include the landscaping, the parking, um, bicycle and EV parking, uh, pedestrian walkway requirements, and reduction of light pollution. And other items uh, in which city departments will be collaborating is on stormwater management and water usage. <clears throat> And excuse me, <laughs> the building uh, division is planning on adopting the 2021 I codes in late 2022. We thought it would be earlier, but we follow along Denver's lines, and they're expecting to adopt the 2021 mid year of 2022. 
So we're looking at uh, adding in additional code or green code amendments that reflect what the other departments are, are doing so that it matches their codes, um, as well as keeping the needs and desires of the city of, or the citizens of Inglewood. Um, we're also looking at bringing something forward to amend the current codes uh, to provide for EV capable, EV ready, and PV capable and PV ready for new construction. And that would be primarily for uh, single family residential new construction. Um, I just kind of wanted to reiterate that the green construction code does not address residential. And so I think that's why it's probably a good idea to uh, look at different things and incorporate those into the current codes that we have rather than adopting the whole green code um, and then having to make so many amendments to that so that it fits the needs of the city. And I know that was rather quick, but there we go. Does anybody have any questions? I have uh, a couple of questions. How can Englewood, uh, according to one person I've talked to, Englewood is not adopted as strict of codes or as energy compliant codes as Denver has. Are is that true, or are we? Uh, equal to Denver. So what Denver did is they amended uh, the energy code. So they do require EV capable and EV ready um, and PV capable and PV ready for new construction. They also adopted um, the green construction code, but it is, it's not uh, mandatory, it's optional. And with that, they have um, provided for incentive plans and rebates. Um, and these are for large, uh, large projects. I think they've only uh, are agreeing to do a five, five of those a year. And I think last year they only did two. Can we, how could we be more cutting edge, Karen? How can we uh, get ahead of the curve, or is that even in our bailiwick? Well, yeah, and that's what um, we're looking at doing. Is you know, a lot of people are are talking. In fact, I think um, they had a presentation with the uh, Code Next group. And they were talking about EV ready and EV capable and incorporating that into that code and mm -hmm. then ours would follow suit. Um, so in that one, they would require, say, on a commercial property that, you know, 5% of the parking spaces um, be, you know, set aside just for uh, electric vehicles and then also set up how many charging stations there would be. Mm -hmm. And then we would then enforce the um, electrical part of that that um, code adoption. Same with water usage. Um, you know, Colorado does not allow for uh, the collection of gray water for commercial buildings. While the green construction code, that's one of the requirements of it. So you have to be careful as not to um, adopt something that then another jurisdiction, say the state, does not allow. So we'd have to look at things like that. But um, it's it's slowly bringing things into our current codes. Um, we are in the line with a lot of jurisdictions. Yes, we are behind on what um, Denver is doing. But um, looking at incorporating some of the things that they're doing into our next code cycle. Okay, so our next code cycle will be in 2022 for yes. adoption. Yes, right? okay. because um, Denver is currently going through the process of amending, you know, looking at amendments for the, the 2022 code. Um, and 
like I said, originally they were talking about bringing it to their council at the end of this year, but they've bumped that to about mid year next year. And so we try to follow suit. Well, we're actually required to follow suit within six months and adopt that same code cycle with ever with our local amendments. Is it possible for the city to require uh, energy efficient future like wiring for, I don't know, other heating than gas or something like that? Or is that too far in the in the future or is that something that we well, could look yeah, at? So, so requiring the EV ready or EV capable or PV ready or PV capable for new construction, um, we could certainly do that. It, it really isn't um, a huge cost to the builder to provide uh -huh. that. And then that would give the homeowner that option of if they do buy or you know already own a vehicle, it's already available to them to to use. Same of, of, of doing solar on their home. And if most of this green code is for business and, and multifamily building, is there stuff that we could do to uh, require energy efficiency in residential? Because some of what I'm seeing is, you know, we're tearing down 800 square feet, 900 square feet homes, and we're building 3,000 square foot homes. Are, I know they're more energy efficient than housing Correct. that's 50 years old, but are we, can we make them even greener in some way, or is that possible? Right, so the, the construction of them, and, and Denver doesn't really require too much extra as far as the construction of the home because they are pretty energy efficient. Every code cycle brings in newer th things um, and more restrictive things as far as energy efficiency. Right. Um, kind of like I said, going back to requiring them to provide for um, electrical vehicle charging or solar uh, abilities, we can require that within amendments to our current codes or to the in the next code cycle. Because as you know, most of what uh, the construction in Inglewood, well, not most of it, because now we're getting a lot of the multifamily, but right. a lot of it is the single family homes. Right. And as far as being greener too, is changing the landscaping requirements. Yeah. Uh, you know, planting things that use less water, uh, you know, putting in irrigation systems that are, are smarter. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, is that part of the, the code process to require that sort of thing already? Right. So as we go along and working with the other departments, that's where we would start bringing in these amendments to our, our codes um, to make, you know, Inglewood greener as a whole. How would you uh, characterize our code right now? Are we cutting edge? Or are we middle of the road? Or are we lagging behind? Or we're, we're middle of the road. There are some jurisdictions that are several code cycles behind us. Um, so, you know, we're, we're on the code cycle that most jurisdictions like Denver, um, I don't even think, I'm not sure that Boulder has even adopted the 2021 yet. So okay. yeah, we're, we're right in the middle. 
We just haven't done a lot of additional amendments or code requirements within the adopted codes that would take it beyond what you know what the basic is. Do you do you see that one of the things that we're looking at as as a sustainability commission is how to get cutting edge without you know, being so restrictive that we discourage development or whatever. But uh, do you see that as a possibility or how could people give input or, you know, help this process along? Well, I think more participation, you know, in the code next cycle or, you know, project, where it is talking about you know changing the landscaping requirements, changing the parking requirements, changing you know pedestrian walkways, you know um, you know the the various programs that the city is already working on, um, increasing bicycle usage, those are all things that you know brings in several different departments in order to make the city greener. But yeah, there you do have to be careful as to not be so restrictive that it is no longer one affordable for the developers to build something, but also that it becomes unaffordable for a a citizen to buy. Yeah. You know, everything that you add raises the cost of something. Yeah. And, you know, Inglewood, along with every other city in Colorado, is struggling with. Um, affordable housing. Indeed. But I, I think there's a lot of things that we could start doing, bringing into the the codes that would um, maybe not make us cutting edge, with, but would certainly bring us, you know, into a better um, area as far as being green without causing a, a huge cost. Yeah, and how 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 could we how would we fit in to this as a commission uh going forward? Could we could we be a funnel for input or how could we help you guys along? I think it would be great if you guys could get input from, you know, the citizens to see what it is that they they want. Um, you know, what it is that people are willing to pay for as well. Mm -hmm. You know, not we might not be buying a new home, but think of somebody else that's buying a new home or or if you're thinking of buying something, what is it you would like to see in that home to make it greener? And what would you be willing to pay for? as a consumer and maybe you could reach out to you know your you know fellow citizens and see how they feel about some of these things yeah i think that's one of the things that we're really going to focus on hopefully is getting more citizen input making citizens aware that this is a direction that we want to go are there other questions or comments? I don't want to monopolize here. You're doing good, Bob. <laughs> and, and I also, as, as we go along doing some of these things, we also don't want to blindside um, you know, builders or even homeowners. I mean, there's a lot of people that are, you know, doing homes, you know, things to their own home that, um, the energy code requires them to upgrade things. Um, so it doesn't always just apply to new construction, it applies to existing construction as well. So we wanna make sure that when we're doing these things that we are, um, you know, really, you know, putting it out there to this, to everybody of here, this is what, what we're doing, this is what's coming up so that they're not blindsided when they submit for a permit of, oh my gosh, I have to do this. I didn't know that. 
Where would that be housed, that education, Karen? Is that something that we'd put on the city website? Yes. And I think the more places you put it, um, the better. So on, on, you know, the community development website, you know, for the building website, you know, things that would require, um, you know, water efficiency, put that on utilities, you know, but put it in, in a lot of different places so it is available. And then perhaps um, maybe, I, I don't know if you guys have created something or, or you're planning on it, you know, Maybe a site just for for your co um, commission. How are we doing on the education front with regard to any of these initiatives or efforts? Right now, we haven't really done much. It, it, it's a lot of um, research more on our side right now. And um, I was talking with Wade Burkholder, and so some of the stuff that I'm going to write up, he's going to put on the Code Next um, website and hopefully get some input from there. Okay. What's the like timeline for, I guess, um, identifying, you know, the codes that we want to include and get updated? Um, you know, submitting to, to council the suggestions, getting things approved. I mean, what does all that timeline look like? Well, so typically when we start looking at code adoption, we're doing it about a year to nine, you know, nine months to a year um, okay. before we start. And so we're looking at adopting the end of next year. So, um, the sooner we start getting input, the better. And then, it, you know, as we come up with different things, we certainly can come back to your commission and say, hey, this is what we're looking at doing and get your thoughts. So would it be helpful to, I guess, for this committee to, I mean, select certain I guess tasks or goals that we should be charged with and you know put maybe deadlines on those that you know our committee is responsible for um, to try to help you know help this move forward or I guess I, I don't know you know what be good. Our... I don't know what um, you know how much you've looked at other um, jurisdictions as to what they're doing if you know, you can get ideas from from them as to what you would like to see within our own codes. Karen, we have a question from Jan Brown, who's a guest, and she wants to know uh, what about electric cooking and heating? Is it, is it a possibility to have buildings built to incorporate that kind of uh, future uh, all electric, uh, you know, considering, you know, green electricity, not coal fired or, or right. whatever. Uh, is that is that included in the codes? Uh, my understanding is, is that it's really not. No, but it's could not. That, could that happen or would that be feasible? It, it could happen, but um, that would be really going way off um, beyond what most jurisdictions are doing. Okay. I think it would be something that could um, be done gradually rather than just, you know, flipping a switch in, as, you know, as of, you know, January of 2023, you know, gas fired appliances would no longer be approved within the city or something. Right. Of that nature. No, we wouldn't want to do that, but I, I guess, you know, like when we had our kitchen redone, we, made it possible to have both gas and electric for the stove and things like that so that 
you at least had an option. There. An option, right. Uh, once uh, again, that gets it to what is the consumer um, willing to pay for, because doing both obviously comes at a cost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike has a question. I don't know if he, you can hear him. If not, I'll relay it. Can't hear him. Solar farms, and particularly as a backup emergency system for the police and uh, public safety, like they did in Puerto Rico. And I just wondered, even on an experimental pilot program, would the city ever think of something? doing something like that. Could you hear that? They missed the first part of it. Has the city made any uh, exploration of a solar farm or wind energy, especially as backup? And uh, so that if something like uh, Puerto Rico happened, we would have those kinds of backup in place even as a pilot program i don't think so but i think that would be something that tim may know the answer to um yeah i can speak to it really quickly um i know that as uh, one of the um utilities water projects for water pumping station um builds a micro turbine um, as a pilot to power uh, a pumping station and it hasn't been finalized yet but in our draft list of um, ideas to spend our ARPA money. Uh, we've included $200,000 for a pilot um, project for the city in terms of renewable energy. So it, I don't think it's fully been talked about in terms of, um, you know, emergency power, things like that, but it's something that we're um, keeping an eye on and exploring. And certainly, um, I know I keep, keep mentioning this, but once we hire a sustainability coordinator investigating, that will certainly be part of the job. And I'm thinking that coordinator will also help um, us with our code adoption in helping us work with all the various departments to make sure that the codes are all matching up and aren't conflicting with each other. I think that's really important too, is to make sure that one department isn't adopting something that goes against the code of another department. Right. Yeah, it'll it'll be good to get somebody with a voice in all of these issues and citywide and and citizen wise also um anything hey, else bob can i jump in here for a second yeah so when uh, when karen presented this to council a while back if I'm remembering right, and Karen, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, the, the general sense uh, with the green building code from council was we want to we want to make sure that all of the green options are available for people who want to to do those building things. We want to we want to make sure it's not illegal, for example, to do something that would be um, right. that would be good for the environment, be sustainable. Um, what we were, the the sense, this was certainly kind of my stance on it and several others, I feel like maybe it was kind of a majority position on council, is that we don't want to um, get into the place where we're ratcheting up requirements in such a way that it hurts our ability to, for people to build and develop affordable housing. And that's the real, the real tension I see here with um, the green building code or other sustainability measures is when you start every new requirement increases the cost of building and you can't have high cost and affordable at the same time. And we're facing, you know, a housing affordability crisis here in Inglewood. And so what we want to, I mean, this is kind of my, my stance on it is we want to make sure that all these options are on the table, even possibly talk about incentivizing or waiving fees or stuff like that in order to get building a uh, green building code stuff in place. Uh, but, but if we if we ramp up the requirements, especially for small time, I mean, oftentimes if you have a huge developer coming in to build an apartment complex, okay, they'll build that into their price. You know, they're going to make their money back. They're going to car carefully crunch the numbers. But what we need is we need lots more. We need small developers, incremental development coming in, we need, uh, housing, infill housing, ADUs throughout the neighborhoods. And every new requirement is going to make that 
more expensive and when it's more expensive you have to charge more uh, and Karen's touched on this of course but I just want I want to put kind of my two cents in on this is as we're thinking about it kind of making sure we're we're balancing um, the need to have affordable housing and growing our housing market on the one hand and uh, making sure that we have the the options without requiring um, overly requiring too much of the developers such that it drives costs up. Right. So yeah, th what what you talked about, Joe, is correct. Um, in that we weren't we're not taking anything off the table. There's always the ability, whether it be green building code or any of the building codes, you can always go beyond what the code requirements are. You know, <laughs> you're not going to get a, anybody that says no, no, you're doing too much. <laughs> So yes, you know, and once again, it's what what is the consumer willing to to pay for? So there are certainly some people that are going to, you know, be willing to pay a little bit more for a house that have you know basically a zero energy, you know, um, you know, low carbon footprint uh, building. And then there's others that are like I I I can barely afford to get into a house, so I'm not going to spend that kind of money. But um, certainly, like I said, nothing's off the table. Um, kind of touching on the ADUs, you know, um, that's the problem that we've had is that people, you know, they have a, a garage that they want to convert into an ADU. Well, there's a lot of energy requirements that go into doing that. And that's just under the most basic codes that we have. That's not including, you know, upping those code requirements. That's just basic. And so some people have run into that issue that they realize they can't really afford to do that. Um, yeah, so that's what too, there's been two permits pulled for ADUs since they were, since, since we passed the law allowing them in 2019, only two people built them. And that's just because they're so expensive just to, you know, to run the utility lines out there. They have to be detached. You, you almost always have to build them on top of parking because there's, Parking require two parking stalls required, uh, and so you you end up with this building that that's by code is required to be two stories high essentially, um, and you know and 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 that you know that only encourages every time you have more re parking requirements you encourage more driving. So, so I think sustainability is really complex because you require if you require too much in your code you require too much parking you encourage more driving you encourage bigger buildings. And those kind of things. So sometimes there's a less is more. You, you get more efficient housing when you have fewer requirements. Um, but anyway, I've said my piece. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Joe. And that's one of the things that I've alluded to, too. We're in a constant uh, stress between affordability and uh, green and energy and saving energy and being green and we want to try to get both incorporated so that we continue to build as a city and yet also reduce our carbon footprint as much as possible so uh that's that's some of what I think we're going to be looking at and struggling with, to be honest with you. I kind of have a thought and it's not fully formed, so bear with me. <laughs> um, but I think and maybe something that, you know, this committee can kind of do is look for there's a lot of existing programs that help just kind of incentivize. So, for example, I had a really old fridge in my garage and um, Excel had a program where they came and picked it up and gave me 50 bucks and some free light bulbs. Um, so maybe looking for opportunities like that to partner with utilities or other, you know, green or lead organizations to kind of see what what we could do without being restrictive or kind of help incentivize instead of, you know. So I don't know, that's kind of my thought. And that's something that would apply to not so much, you know, new construction, but existing homes and to help make those greener 
as mm -hmm. well as the new stuff. You know, I think that's important too, is to try to make existing um, as green as possible without causing a lot of um, cost to the, the homeowner. Mm -hmm. And I think those are those are small things that we can kind of research and seek out and do all of the legwork um, that we can kind of then, you know, tout to the community while still, you know, helping to provide our piece and for the sustainability in Englewood. And, you know, who knows, maybe that'll open up conversations with other groups that might be critical down the line. Karen, do you know if Arapahoe County is still doing their weatherization program or is that I, ongoing? I believe they are. Okay. Because that's a really good program. And I've, I've, you know, talked to people who've utilized it and really seen huge benefits in their heating bills and utilities and everything else. And maybe that's something that we need to partner with or foster more too. I don't know. And, you know, I mean, a few it, years ago, we actually, at my home, we had XL Energy come out. They were offering a program then, and they came out and just pointed out things that we could do within our own home. Um, you know, they walked around with their little heat gun. They showed areas where, you know, we needed to add insulation, you know, um, which we did, and it helped. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a, it was a home, you know, built in 1998, so it was actually fairly energy efficient compared to some homes, but there was still areas that we could improve. Yeah, 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 I had basically the same thing done and it, it really did help. And then I had an insulation contractor came in and I paid for it and still recovered my costs within two years of doing it, I think I figured. So it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. And we can continue on with that. But yeah, I, I really want to be a, a source of input for you and an ongoing support to find that balance and 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 keep us keep us advancing so if we don't do anything we're soon going to be living in phoenix <laughs> felt like that this summer that's for sure <laughs> yeah any anyone else does inglewood have um anything like uh, how do I, uh, Denver's like, what was it? Green, green roof initiative, I think was what it was called. Did they pass that a few years ago? Um, has there been any appetite for or interest in something like that in Inglewood? Um, I believe they did pass it and, um, I haven't heard any real interest in it, but. I know it was more of a heavy handed approach kind of top down, but you know, with Councilman Anderson mentioning like incentive based uh, initiatives. I was just thinking, I was just curious if something like that had been brought up or introduced or talked about. I don't even know how many buildings in Inglewood we have over 25, 30,000 square feet. You know, Denver has quite a few. So just curious. So, like I said, I haven't heard anybody um, really pursuing that. But once again, I think that would be something either. Um, if you push for that, you're going to, you know, lose probably some, you know, projects. Um, yeah. Unless you can incentivize it. Right. Yeah, the right way. Okay. Anyone else? appreciate you doing this for us, Karen. Sure. Hopefully we can build on this and move forward rapidly and accomplish some good things. So, Karen, can, I have a, can we have a copy of your presentation? 
Sure, I'll email it to uh, who would be the best person to email it and then for, forward it on to Tim. Probably Tim. OK. Yeah, that was informative. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, and you know, as we get further down the process of adopting the new codes, um, maybe we can circle back around and touch base and see where we're at. Cool. Yeah. Hopefully by that time we'll have a sustainability person and we'll be in constant contact, huh? <laughs> I guess I guess I am going to say a little something for my department. <laughs> as far as being green, we finally, finally, after a very long time, are online with permitting. And so, you know, that is being green because I, I bet our paper consumption in our department in the last two years has dropped. Um, and then just, you know, not having to have people drive to the city to get a permit that costs twenty five dollars and eighty five cents, <laughs> um, I think that's that really helps um, everybody as a whole. So keeping some of the cars on the streets. Yeah, every little bit helps. That's for sure. All right. Appreciate Thank it you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Sure. Tim, do you have anything else? Sorry, <laughs> uh, no, I don't, that's it. Great, then uh, just remember that we've got November 6th coming up and put it on your calendar and if you have any questions let me know and we'll just plan on being that? there uh what time is it i think it's eight o'clock but it may be nine o'clock i will i will double check that eight to one i think it's eight yep okay i move We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I second.